you know, the the more you you, you investigate, you know, you're curious about the past because you've seen entities there. Let me say, I'm glad y'all came out. Uh, uh, I, I hope you success tonight. I do want to say, you know, we're remodeling the whole house. When you find a bone, a human bone, I guess we could start uh, maybe what grave we found. Okay. And uh, if you want to, we'll go back here and okay. I'll show it to you. All right, let's walk uh, this way. So you found a grave under the floor, in the ground. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, I can use step across here. Yeah. All right, look, Kenny, this is what we did. Okay. Okay. We took this and tore this out because we're going to make part of this a bathroom in the house. Right. And uh, so when we took it out, all we have was these logs. And there's a hole right there. If anybody's got a light, they could see it. This actually right here. I've got pictures, and I'm gonna, I'll send them to your phone. Okay. Um, but there was a hole there, and I probed it, and I knew something had been buried there. Well, on the other side of one of the logs, there was a hole about this big around. So started digging it, because there's rumors of things being buried there. Right. So we checked it out dug down, it broke to about four and a half foot. And I started digging out, got a little ways down, my metal detector picked up a hinge. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it was really brittle. And I started pulling up chunks of wood. So it appeared to be a box in here. We got down to the bottom and there was a place about this big, about that big, Oh, about like this. So it's like a, the size of a maybe a, a coffin of for a child. And for a child, and that was solid black dirt. When you find that there's a the fact that there's been other people buried, shallow burials on the property. We're not talking graveyards. We're not talking. We're not talking about a c cemetery. Okay. When you pull up the floor and find that there was a child-sized coffin under the house. But anywhere around it, beneath it on top, was clear. So, uh, it appears that that's what that is, is a grave. And uh, I stand real sure on that. The sheriff come out, the sheriff's office come out, documented it, and gave me a case number on it. Okay. Well, uh, And we're starting to put it back so we can... So if, if we was to look under there, we couldn't really see nothing but dirt as of right now. Right, you can see where it sunk in at. Right. And uh, what we're going to do is cap it off with cement okay. pretty soon. All right. So, all right. Anything else you want to add to this? Uh, well, so. other than... Well, just hearing some footsteps about a month ago. That was it. Um, and sometimes you you feel the feeling in here, and you know it's pretty close. Yeah, and I, I, I thought you had said something about uh, uh, someone that was helping you out was uh, touched or grabbed at? Um, or day before yesterday, day yesterday, a friend of mine has a towing company, and he knows about the whole house. And he come up here, and we were waiting on the sheriff's deputy to get here about the grave. And uh, he went on through the house, and he, he comes in sometimes and does things. He can tell you some stories about it. Yeah. And uh, when I got through doing that with the deputy, I went up there, and a lot of spider webs had brushed over his head up in the room. Pretty cold that day. And uh, there was no spider webs around. The suicide, the child that died upstairs, had something to do with the fireplace. The shadow people that we've captured on camera, 
the strange light flash swirled like some a weird portal. That's what we're working on right now. Right. So, so, so you're saying he felt like it felt like spider webs, which is one of the things I will I always talk to you guys about. Uh, which yes. is, is usually static electricity, which to me, I, I, well, there's rumors that, you know, uh, the theory is spirits or, or whatever, that they uh, are made of energy, and, uh, and then, well, so, so it feels like static, static electricity. That's right. My, my fiance the other day, uh, was, they was in the road out here, right down the side of the road, ain't nothing around, and she felt the same thing. She said, I just run in some spider webs, I said, there ain't no spider webs out here. Right. And that's happened, all oh, that's happened about the last month. Now there's things here that I hadn't told you that uh, we understand from three three different people. I swap around, is that light? Yeah. It's blinding me. Okay, we can do it. About three different people. Um, we did find a grave or two in the front yard. Uh, there's supposed to be a lady and two children buried here. There's a lady and a child buried right outside the whole family cemetery. And uh, I was here one day and some boy come up about, I don't know, maybe 22 years old or such. And he said that this, um, he had to do a paper in high school and that there was a, a woman and two children buried here. So. I asked him, I said, well, how did you find out? And he said, I don't remember, but I found out and put it in a, a paper I had to do for the school. Well, we had a, we had a, uh, a medium lady come out here, a psyche, and she walked around and she stopped right out here. And she said she felt that someone let me get this straight. Someone had been buried in shallow graves. She told me she didn't think they were quite dead yet. Well, went on and we had another uh, uh, medium come out with a paranormal group out of Madisonville. And I told him, I said, I said, come take a walk with me. So we walked around the yard and we got back over here about a by the gravel, and I asked him, I said, uh, I said, you feel anything? He said, no. And then he told me, he said, wait a minute. And he took me right back to where, I bet you he wasn't standing a foot from her, where she told me that. And he said, right in here, I felt someone had to be buried in a hurry. So. So, I mean, it, it can't be a coincidence. Not with three people. No. And I mean, we've heard footsteps, seen shadow people. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we, we captured shadow people on, on on video, but for some reason, it's always upstairs. It seems more more active. We that same that afternoon when that group from Madison Mill came, right there where you're standing, she come in there with a camera, with a high dollar camera, and uh, it's supposed and it did. It, it, if it looks at you, you're a stick person, you know. Uh, uh, if she picks an entity up with it, it's a stick person. Well, we come in the door, and there was someone inside that room like that. Well, we come in, and we were standing here, and we picked up about three entities in that doorway. And the grave is right there. Right. I did not know that was there. Yeah, that's before you knew it. This was well over a year ago. Well, we went through the house, I think we counted 13 entities all together. Upstairs, we encountered one in it that was real bad. The more we looked at it, the more violent it got. So that probably explains why it's more active upstairs. Whatever it is, it must be stronger in, in, in energy or well, something, so. Uh... I may be wrong, it seems like, uh, Maybe that thing is keeping the others here. I don't know. But when we come back and we got here again, there, there were more, more more entities right here. I think we counted 
five or six, yeah. and there was a child, but they never touched the floor. They never would touch the floor. Huh. Just like them channel people. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but we captured a woman twice up here in Windows. I actually saw her go across the room one day. Um, I've seen two people in that upper room. And uh, then when I tore this sheet rock off, apparently someone else had seen it back before the 50s when it was from sheet rock. Uh, they had said go up to room two to see the whole room furnished. Right. And then we got that on the wall where that man was killed by his sons in the former. Yeah, and it said that on the wall. Didn't it say something? Uh, Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy? Was killed here by his sons. Son. Yeah. And uh, there's, I mean, there's always something here. I have, uh, yeah, there, there's just a few things I wanted to ask. Uh, uh, one of the investigations that we did uh, after, uh, I mean, when I reviewed the audio, passing by the stairway, I think, there was children laughing or crying. We, we, my, my little brother lives down the hill. I don't know if he's coming or not, but several times he has told my mama and he's even told me the story. One night in particular, he kept hearing children playing. Right. Well, and he was listening. I mean, there's nobody that lives around us. And uh, so he, he goes outside, opens the door, he don't hear it. So he comes back in a little bit, it starts again. I think he'd done it two or three times that night. But I've heard old time music play, you know, from the early, early uh, 1900s. Right. I've heard that playing at night. That's happened three or four times. Yeah, but I, I believe every time that we've investigated, we've, we've caught stuff. And, and I, I'm assuming, I mean, uh, the, the house was built 48, 1848? 47, 48. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, there's 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 people buried all around here. On, oh. on, on the on the grounds, right underneath the house. And that one in the front yard, yeah. we found that one. Uh, I know where the one is. Just let me tell you this. When that woman, that psychic lady, that day, spotted that same area, I told her, I said, uh, well, you want to walk to the cemetery? Oh, well, we walked over to the cemetery. Well, I know where that woman and child is buried over there. They were buried right outside the cemetery because it was an illegitimate child. Right. Okay, she walked by there, and I never told her nothing. And she looked in the vicinity right there on the ground. And she said, what's the matter, baby? They didn't want you buried in their sacred cemetery. And I said, uh, what are you talking about? And she said, there's a child buried here. I said, how do you know it? And she said, I just know it. I said, who you been talking to? She said, I ain't talking to nobody. And I called my brother. And I said, did you tell these people anything? And he said he didn't, you know. Uh, there's too many, look, We've had several people, one of them's a state trooper, that uh, has went upstairs and they'll tell you they don't want to go back. And I mean, I have felt some, I've seen about seven or eight shadow people here, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, see them plain as day. Yeah. The stuff that I posted on YouTube, uh, you know, there's even comments uh, that there was a guy who lived in the, back here, his family back in the 20s. And he said every time they passed the house, that they'd look and, and one day he passed and he's seen uh, on, on the balcony a lady in white. Well, we got a picture of a lady standing on the porch also. Okay. I got that picture of her. Uh, we had a picture of a man hanging in the cemetery. And um, that's not far from where the grandson hung himself in the cotton gin. A lot of tragedy. It didn't take too long to tell you that. I have a lady that came here. Uh, her daughter took the picture of, we call her Eliza. Took her picture and she was in that window up there. Um, and 
But the, the woman on a day by like it is today, she was up there looking in the old attic room. That's where the boys slept to this family. While I'm thinking, don't let me forget to show you that. Okay. And uh, it's, it's okay. You can stand over here. Okay. Well, he uh, what was I telling you about the the woman? She was standing there, and she told me she said, "I just saw a flash in this room." Huh. That's the truth. And I can tell you, people here that know her, we have people all the time that stop and say, well, I've always heard about this house. This week, the newspaper called me here and wanted to do an article on the house. He said, I've talked to a lot of people about the house. And plus, I've been interviewed about seven times on the radio here for the house. But he come out here and he interviewed me and on March the 9th, it's supposed to come out in the Enterprise Journal here. And uh, he said he was going to do about a four or five page article. But always finding stuff. And like right here is Eliza Powell's signature. Apparently, she was a granddaughter. There's a signature there yeah. right can now? You, yeah, can you, can you sign it where you sign it with your light? It's right here. Yeah, you got your phone with your light? Does somebody... And, uh, okay, here we go, she got it. I ain't never figured out how to cut mine, no. Let me turn the infrared off. All right. That interferes with the... Uh, Eliza Powell was the granddaughter of John Bond that built this house. Right here. Right under my finger. Okay, there we go. Yes, okay, there and, it is. So apparently, she signed that, you know, maybe a teenager or something. Mm -hmm. Um, um, but everybody knows about the place. I, I don't, uh, I, I need somebody to take some notes in your phone maybe, because uh, I want to know, uh, I want to know some names, or, or could have any connection with this house, with the situation. John Bond, we call him Grandpa John Bond, he built the house, John Bond did. And his grandson, it was turned over to his grandson. And his grandson, um, now, I'm going to say this, uh, that if I give you this information, I don't want no movie made without of all this. I don't have no movie okay. made movie. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let me say this, Kenny. John Bond, Grandpa John, signed the dancing... Dancing Rabbit, Dancing Creek Rabbit Tree, whatever the tree that was, moved the Choctaw out. His son built this house. He stayed here. His daughter was thrown into the fireplace, we believe, upstairs. His daughter was thrown into the fireplace. Do yeah. you know her, her name? Her name? her name was Abigail. Abigail? Sarah. Sarah? Bond. Okay. And and she died. Okay, she's buried in the cemetery on the January the 2nd, 1852. She was two and a half years old. Okay, now, time went on. Uh, his other daughter here, she died. And around her place over here, her, cemetery, her grave, a lot of times, bones mess up. They go in a white out, and you get out of the little cemetery, they, they clear up. Um, that's happened about three times. Yeah. Um, he turned the, the farm over to his son, Pyram Powell. And Pyram went through a tragic thing here with his wife. And she left him, took all the money, and it looks like he had some sort of, maybe a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. And one day, he went across the street and hung himself in the cotton gin. So he hung himself, it wasn't in the house? No, it was in the cotton gin. Oh, okay. I know what I wanted to ask you. Uh, the children were laughing or crying that we picked up. Uh, someone said that, that there was a story about how they used to hide or had to hide the children under the stairway. Right here, right here, family story, uh -huh. family story. Byron's wife, Lita was very mean. Uh, 
um, what I've seen when his death came, I don't think there was any children even living with him anymore. They were living with relatives. And she left him. She loved the lavish lifestyle. They had dances up in the upper level all the time. And yeah, that's well known. He lent money to people and when it could, before his death, well, let me back up. She was mean and she punished him in here quite often, pretty rough, and would lock him up in there and things. Well, Byram had some, when she left, two days later, he went over to Macomb to get a new cotton gin machinery off the railroad cars and pay for it. Well, when he went to do that, uh, she had done went by the bank two days before when she left him, got the money and left. Well, we believe he had some sort of nervous breakdown. And he didn't last but I think four or five months afterwards or so. I'm not exact on that. But when he, he did that, he couldn't remember where he put his money and such. And he just really deteriorated. They put him under a watch. I've got the obituary stories, articles in the paper on these people. So one Wednesday morning, he went over there, he hung himself. And they lost the farm. That was at the height of the depression. People here could not pay him back. He was worried about financial matters and other things right. and his health. So that's that was a pretty tragic story. I didn't, I never thought stuff like this would happen until I come here. Right. And uh, I got family members saying the same thing. And the first time I heard them footsteps, I couldn't get over it, you know? Yeah. But I guess, Ken, that's about it. Okay. Y'all just be careful and right. I'm glad y'all came. Okay, good. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Y'all be careful, buddy. Anyway, we're in the woods on a search on, uh, the old Powell Cemetery and um, we're here with Andrew behind me so uh, I think I'm supposed to lead the way um, I'm gonna have to use my flashlight though. I keep getting caught on vines. Dude, this is so cool looking through the the lens. Look at that. Can you see it? Trees. And we kept we kept going coming from this angle. I'm gonna to pull my phone out in a second to see where we are in the woods. I just blinded it myself. Oh, I do remember. Yeah. Yeah, this is the... Uh, we had a cross underneath these little trees right here. Yeah, here's the magnolia tree. See the big magnolia tree? Uh-huh. This is it. This is the graveyard. But, oh look, there's the headstones. Eliza, the wife of John Bond. Oh, 
about you? Here's John Vaughn. No. There's Abigail. Abigail? Mm -hmm. Abigail. Right there. Abigail. Mm. Whoops. I'm trying not to bond us here. Turn the flash on. Abby. Here we go. Mary L. Bond, wife of W. O. Powell, born eighteen fifty four, died eighteen ninety four. Yeah, um, so he, 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 he's right, he did clean up. The last time that we came back here, there was like little, there was more trees growing through all of this. And, uh, like you couldn't even see these at all. There was, there was only like a couple. M. L. Who's that? M L P. Oh yeah, ML. I see. I just need to turn that light certain way. You can see it. You see it really good. I'm going to. I just got like big steel. House. It's, pretty, it's even with the house basically. Huh? What the hell is that? What? Nothing. Felt like something was walking in, in, in front of me. You didn't hear it? No. But it is like directly even with the house. And there's like a straight open a slope, a big, big dip. And then it goes really high. So this is, a, I think this point is, how is that, the point of the house? Yeah, I freaked out because I thought it, it may have been a bug or something. I got my fire set off. So let's set down the camera, I'll, I'll set my camera down on top of something, aiming in which direction would it be? Just like this, I guess. Oh. Okay. So, uh, I guess let's go ahead and start EVP session. Is there anybody out here? Anybody out here that would care to talk to us? Was Thomas buried here? What about Abby? I see Abby's grave. Obviously her death was untimely. Do you want to talk about it? Pretty 
crazy that we're here at a graveyard that's been here since 1800s and forgotten. In the middle of the freaking night. In, in the middle of the night. What the heck am I doing? <clears throat> Are we joined by anybody who wants to vocalize anything? We're not here to harm you. Just here to talk. Do you know what happened to Thomas? The entire, like, all the hairs on the back of my neck just stood up. I felt like static electricity. It seemed like you get a lot whenever you ask about, about Thomas. Thomas. Huh. That was you? It's like Ready? a whistle. Yeah, that must yeah, have. that was me. I'm guessing that Thomas's death was untimely. <sighs> My light went out when I asked that. <laughs> Can you make my light go out again? That's kind of weird. This is the guy who uh, had supposedly hung himself, or sorry, hanged himself uh, from the cotton gin. What the hell is that? Water. Something fell in this shook, shook the tree. Animal. Wait, that was something like hanging. You should have hair standing up now. <laughs> Something just like fell behind us. Anyway. You ready to head back or what? Huh? Are you ready to head back or what? Yeah. It's so dead and quiet and peaceful really. Here. It's a, oh, I'm a blind again. It's a shame to do something so straight that way. Huh? Oh, it's a shame that we can't just go straight that way. Check out the beginning of the investigation. Episode 2. Power Plantation 2018.